every seven tubers of sugar beet yield a kilogram of refined sweetness. In just 24 hours, this enormous amount of raw product will turn into tons of Snow White sugar. To get there, beetroot has to cover a long journey. First, the sugar beet goes into the washing section. The tubers move on a conveyor belt under jets of water, pass through special devices, sand separators, and stone catchers. After eliminating major impurities, the beet moves to a drum washer. It has to be perfectly clean. After several rounds of washing, there will be no signs of grit, palm, or straw left. Before going to slicing, beetroots, already sparkling clean, undergo a strong shower one more time. Now it's time to chop the beet into small pieces. A drum beet slicer is a gigantic grater 18 meters in diameter. Eight tons of beetroot can pass through it in just one minute, and every single one of them will be turned into cossets. By the way, cane sugar is made with the same technology. Sugar syrup is extracted from sugar cane stalks after they had been minced into thin shavings. Beet slicer produces cossets, which are then passed to a diffuser for sucrose extraction. The conveyor moves the beetroot cossets into the shaft of the diffuser. Where hot water of up to 80 degrees Celsius is pumped over it. This process helps to extract the maximum amount of sugar from the beet, although it will take more than one hour. All the sugar from the cossets can be recovered in about six hours. The end product is syrup called diffusion juice. This dark substance has a lot of impurities. The diffusion juice has to undergo careful processing and refining before it can turn into a sugar cube. Higher levels of refinement yield bigger amounts of white sugar. Sugar production is really based on the refining of the raw beetroot juice called diffusion juice. With the help of lime and carbon dioxide. In the beginning, lime looks like this, only it comes in bigger uh, lumps, conglomerates. As a result of a chemical reaction with water, it gets slaked and turns into milk of lime. This substance is the basic chemical agent for juice purification. Clumps of lime that have been used to refine the beetroot juice stay on filters. Filter mesh is so dense that it retains even the smallest particles and juice moves on to the next step of production. Right now, it is 16% sugar. The rest is water. The excessive moisture has to be vaporized in vacuum pans. Mass acute, highly concentrated syrup is the product of several hours of boiling. During this time, the temperature inside the machine has to be gradually lowered. Otherwise, you won't have a lot of sugar, mostly caramel. When the sugar concentration in the syrup reaches 80%, operator adds sugar crystals that act as nucleation sites. And the sugar that's already been present in the syrup is attracted to these new granules. This way, crystals keep growing bigger and bigger. Sugar syrup starts crystallizing right after boiling. This is the longest stage of the manufacturing process. Back in the day, it could last up to several weeks. 
Today, operators help the syrup to solidify by adding small sugar crystals in it. That's why the substance is fully crystallized in less than 12 hours. Separation of crystals from the rest of the substance is performed with a centrifuge. To transform this brown sugar into the familiar white one, it has to be dissolved, condensed, crystallized, and put through a centrifuge again. This process is repeated three times. That's the only way to extract the maximum amount of sugar from the beetroot with this dark brown molasses left as a byproduct. This molasses is a byproduct of sugar manufacturing. It's impossible to extract any more sugar from it, so we send it to other factories that use it as a main raw material. A single plant produces up to 1,350 tons of sugar a day. And all this sugar finds its consumer. It's an essential carbohydrate that provides our brain, liver, and muscles with energy. Sugar is crucial for our health and normal function of our cells. But does it mean that no amount of sugar is too much? For our body, everything has pros and cons, so if you eat sugar in normal, moderate amounts, it would have an obvious positive effect, but if you do it excessively, it might result in something bad. Can sugar turn from our friend into our enemy? Actually, the way we are built is fascinating, because the human body has an ability to produce sugar to prevent a rapid drop in its level. It's an amazing, fail-safe mechanism against hypoglycemia, low sugar levels, and it's called liver glucose production.